Hey, Builder Blog. Um, behold, the cabinet of infinite storage, the newest addition to our shop. It actually all closes up. I have a very nice presentation value. I really am trying to make this a studio for the Builder Blog to grow into. So I've been fighting robots for 20 years, and after 20 years, I have a million different sorting systems. And uh, this was one of my very first ones. It's so old, the plastic is degrading, because after 20 years, <laughs> the plastic's literally just falling apart. I, I ran that sorting bin until literally it fell apart. So I'm getting rid of all my old storage stuff, and it is all being converted to the cabinet of infinite storage. Now here it is, wave two of the crap. Can I magically make all of this fit into the bin? What do you think? Will it, will it fit? I mean, with a hammer, anything can fit into anything. Awesome, take this fragile photo. Make it fit. Because of Bot Bash Parties, the company I run, uh, we field over a hundred insect robots out of this thing. What does that mean? I have a hundred transmitters. I have a hundred complete robots. All of them have speed controllers, batteries, finger tech switches, the whole nine yards. And I need to keep them all running. For those of you who do compete, I want you to picture how hard it is to keep your one robot or maybe three robots going. And then know I'm doing that for a hundred. And I run the YouTube channel on top of that. <laughs> and I run Scorpio X on top of that. And I work a full-time job. And I run a company. That's why I'm out of shape. That and poor eating habits. Um, <laughs> So today, I am trying to compress 20 years of different sorting bins all into the cabinet. So like, this is a good example of why I'm doing this. Because like, here's three different types of finger tech hubs. We have the original ones that worked with Dave's uh, light flight wheels. We have the red snap ring hubs, and then we have his new blue uh, screw on hubs with the custom tool. And like I used to used to have some here in the finger tech hub bin. I had some here in my wheel hub portable bin. I I have some in those cases. These are two donation boxes that have finger tech hubs in them. So I I had six different locations in my old shop, which is why it takes me forever to do anything. But now it's gonna be sorted to just three bins that are gonna be right there in a row. And I'm going to know absolutely everything I have. So I have a bin like this. This was given to me at RoboGames as a donation. And it's mixed with all kinds of fun and cool robot stuff. There's a balancing robot. Mm. Stick that down here. But I also have a million finger tech wheels. Hey look, some more finger tech hubs. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm going to sort these by diameter and I'm going to give each diameter down here its own bin. But uh, one and three quarters will probably get like two or three bins. It's my favorite tire size. And I literally ordered a hundred of them. 80, 20. Another finger tech, an inbox. That has a receiver built in. That'll go there. In package finger text. Baby. All right. What else do we have in the donation box? Power cord. Let's throw that over there. I'm going to try to embrace. So every shop does need a little chaos and does need a junk drawer. But I'm going to try to take a new approach to it. As you see, I have these big shelves that have always been clutter magnets. I've had this since my third shop. And uh, no matter what I've tried, clutter attacks these things. So I'm actually going to put a two by four here to here to block this, to make the bottom of that basically a tub. And I'm, you see I've already put some of the uh, wall control panels in there. 
I'm gonna put bends along the back for sorted screws, but I'm gonna make just the whole bottom of this shelf, the whole lining of this shelf, loose hardware. So when I'm done with a project and there's a bunch of loose screws that don't have spots, I'm just gonna sweep it into the miscellaneous screw pile. Because every shop has like a 10 year, 20 year box of just miscellaneous stuff. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side here with wire and connectors on this shelf. So there's gonna be another two by four. We're gonna have wire racks and wire reels behind that. So instead of sorted screw bins, which will be on this side, there'll be little reels of wire and material. And then just the random wire bin and connector bin. And something like this will go on there. It's like opening Christmas presents. Now I try not to keep things in little bags, like this is another organization system that another builder was using. But I hate little bags. I, I will take bags if they have labels on them that tell you what it is. Because that can help with reordering, but I, I hate bags within bags. Adam Savage had his famous first order retrievability. Because that's what I'm trying to do with this. I want there to be one thing. When I decide to build a robot, I'm gonna walk up to this and go, hey, I wanna build a robot today. And I open this one thing, and I will have all of my parts laid out before me. And then we can build robots. Look at it, an entire bag of sorted finger tech cups. <laughs> you thought I was joking when I pointed to the other three things I pulled finger tech cups out of. It's like attaching wheels to the robot's important or something. Garbage. 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 Now, something like this I'm definitely not going to keep. I'm sorry. I know technically I could grind this into a new wheel that's a much smaller diameter. And I have done that. Don't think I haven't. But it's just not worth my time. Um... When you are a builder, you do need to specify what your time is worth. So, for example, let's say there's a new part on Scorpios I wanna make. I send the drawing out to a shop and get it quoted, and they come back and tell me it's $400. Uh, I need to decide, because I kind of value my time at about 100 bucks an hour, because that's what I could be doing at Bot Bash. So, do, uh, would it take me more than four hours to machine that part? Now, with the size of my milling machine and the size of the cutter I can put in it, that kind of determines that. And so that determines what I make in-house and what I uh, send out. And similar on robot parts, if I give a part, that's a $3.50 wheel. And so for me to set up my hand drill, get on the pedestal grinder, spin that up to speed, grind it down, measure it, get it to the right size. Um, I'd have to be able to do all of that in like under, I know someone will correct my math in the comment section, but let's just say five minutes to be worth, you know, a hundred bucks an hour. And I, I'm not trying to be stuck up when I say that price range, that's just, like I said, what I could be earning at Bot Bash. Man, these are a variety of weird little wheels. Finger Tech Hub, Finger Tech Hub, Finger Tech Hub. I am so gonna use these. We're gonna make a little one pound Scorpios here soon. Might be my very first project in the exciting new bin. Loctite. Who doesn't need Loctite? A good pair. So the difference between Finger Tech wheels and Dave's hub wheels is that weird little gray hub. Finger Tech wheels just come like this. Dave's Dave Brown wheels, which are extinct, used to come like that. You'd have to pull the hub out to put the Finger Tech hub in. 
sorry, robot history. Finger tech wheels, finger tech wheels. A bag of finger tech wheels. Oh, wait, wait, there's something else. Oh, my favorite size, one and three quarters. A vertical, vertical thing is to hold a motor. I could actually really use this building the trade show things last week. See, look at all the stuff we're fighting. It's almost like I should have moved the shop before I did the trade show. Live and learn. Garbage. Finger tech wheel. Finger tech wheel. Finger tech wheel. Finger tech wheel. Bainbot wheel. Favorite size wheels. Finger tech wheel. Four more Bainbot wheels. This one, however, is missing chunks. To the garbage with you. Finger tech wheel. Finger tech wheel. Finger tech wheel. Brushless speed controllers and a linear actuator. All right, we have a spot for brushless speed controllers. Oh. Those things are like usually $120 to $500 a piece, just hanging out in my junk pile. Finger tech wheels. <laughs> All my snips. Oh, I've been looking for these. They were in the junk pile the whole time. Sharpies, who doesn't need a Sharpie? Viper kit top plate. Bot bash top plate. Yeah, I'm gonna stick these up here in my two top plate piles. <laughs> a 3D printed drum for a plastic ant. This is exactly what I mean by like a 10 year box. It's like 10 years of random hardware, hubs, connectors, screws. I can't sort through all of this tonight. and probably take the rest of the night just to finish this one bin. But that's kind of what the shelf's going to eventually be for. Oh, and stickers. Because yeah, people do love us on Yelp. Seriously, I showed my mother my Yelp page once. She looked at me and said, I wouldn't want to be the person who has to live up to these reviews. Bash party. This is where I bring robots so kids can have fun. And the, the dad said, I noticed your Yelp page is nothing but five-star reviews. It's clearly fake. I've never put a fake review on there. But it's clearly fake. And today, no matter how good this party is, you're going to get a four-star review. And it, it, was, it was an odd way for someone to start a birthday party with me. But I just nodded and said, okay, sir, I'm going to do the best job I can. And I, I threw my normal party. I didn't do anything special. I was like, the fix is in on this one. It's going to be four stars no matter what I do. But the kids had a good time. Actually, I'd say the kids had a great time. And, uh... At the end of it, the gentleman came over with his phone open to the Yelp page. He had written down a review of what happened. And he goes, I want you to watch this. And he pushed five stars. And he goes, I now understand why your Yelp is all five stars. And, uh, sorry, I know that sounds very conceited, but I, uh, I always really enjoyed that party, <laughs> and I enjoyed that moment. I swear, I didn't do anything special. That was just the kind of party we throw. So. <laughs> You're probably thinking right now, this is not a five-star video, Zach. <laughs> and I am sorry for that. I really do want to be designing Scorpios right now. Unfortunately, I have to be out of my old shop by February 28th, so. And I don't want to just put a giant junk pile in here. I'd like there to be some rhyme and reason. Zach's thoughts while sorting the shop. My big butt just snacked the door. 